Rainbow Six Siege defines operators by their gadgets. Whether or not they get to use their gadgets depends on the strength of their weapon. If you run out of ammunition on your primary weapon in the middle of a gunfight, the strength of your sidearm will determine if you live or die. Today we'll be looking at which operators get the best sidearms in Operation Parabellum. Starting off our list at number 5 is the Keratos, a revolver available to the two Italian defenders. Being a revolver, it is a two-shot kill against all operators in the game, regardless of their armour rating. What makes the Keratos significantly superior to the other revolver in the game is that it maintains this two-shot kill at long range, as even after its damage drops off to its minimum, it only drops to 65, which is still a two-shot kill against all operators in the game. What solidifies its superiority is that it's the only revolver that can equip muzzle attachments, specifically a muzzle brake or a suppressor. The Keratos is one of the very few guns in Siege that is actually viable with a suppressor, as even with the maximum damage reduced to 66, it is still a two-shot kill against all operators in the game, at least at close range. Beyond 12 meters, the damage starts to drop off, meaning you may not be able to down two and three armor targets in two shots. But most engagements in the game take place at ranges closer than 10 meters, so that scenario is pretty unlikely. The Keratos is the only semi-automatic gun to make it into our list, as all the rest are fully automatic machine pistols that can stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with most primary weapons. Number 4 on our list is the SMG-11. With a base damage of 33, it kills all operators in 4 shots, unless the target is wearing Rook armor. With the highest rate of fire in the game at 1,270 rounds per minute, the SMG-11's first burst will down any operator in just 142 milliseconds, unless Rook's armor is involved. However, it is crippled by its extremely limited magazine capacity of 16, plus one in the chamber. This means you will run out of ammo in just 803 milliseconds of sustained fire, leaving this gun ineffective against multiple opponents. The recoil on the gun is very strong, but it runs out of ammo before it can truly be felt. This is why the SMG-11 is not higher in our list. Number three on our list is the C-75 Auto, available to Korean operators. What makes this gun immediately better than the SMG-11 is its decent magazine capacity of 27 rounds, meaning you rarely run out of ammunition as you would with the SMG-11. Its base damage of 35 makes it a three-shot kill against one-armor operators, with two and three armored operators taking an additional shot to kill. With a fire rate of 1,000 rounds per minute, its first burst kills three speed operators in just 120 milliseconds, which is faster than any other gun in the game, including Twitch's F2 assault rifle. Against better armored targets, however, the gun falters, taking 180 milliseconds to kill two and three armored targets, which is slower than all but one of the machine pistols. Against three armored defenders with Rook armor, the C-75 takes 240 milliseconds, which makes it hands down the slowest machine pistol at killing the most heavily armored targets in the game. However, it is not these flaws that keep the C-75 from reaching higher in our list. The only attachment it can equip is the suppressor, which is ill-advised as it reduces your damage, making it a four-shot kill against one armor operators, with better armored operators taking an additional shot to kill. The suppressor makes the C-75 the slowest killing machine pistol in the game against all operators, which is why you do well to steer clear of it. What's surprising is that you cannot equip a muzzle brake either, although its absence isn't felt quite as hard since its recoil is fairly controllable even without any attachments. Apart from that, the C-75 cannot equip any grip or optical sight, which is sorely missed as the iron sights leave a great deal to be desired. All of these flaws put together prevent the C-75 from climbing higher in our list. Number two, the second best sidearm in the game is a Bearing 9, available to both Japanese operators. Like the C-75 Auto, this gun has a decent magazine capacity that will not leave you wanting in firefights. Its base damage of 33 makes it a consistent four-shot killer against all operators as long as no rook plate is involved. Its rate of fire is an average 1100 rounds per minute, which means it takes 164 milliseconds to kill all operators that haven't equipped Rook's plate. This makes it slower than the two machine pistols discussed previously, but is still very competitive, even against many assault rifles. What makes it better than the C-75 is the wide array of attachments you can equip on it, including all muscle attachments and optical sights bar the ACOG. You have no choice with grips as it already comes with a vertical grip. 
As such, its recoil is fairly manageable compared to other machine pistols, although you will still find it beneficial to control it as best you can. All in all, the Bering 9 is a jack of all trades, master of none, which is what keeps it from being the best sidearm in the game. Speaking of which, before we get to the best sidearm in Rainbow Six Siege, let's look at a few honourable mentions. One pistol that could have taken Keratos' spot at number 5 is SDU's Q929. It strikes a good balance between stopping power and magazine capacity, carrying a very respectable 10 rounds, 11 if you count the one in the chamber. Its base damage of 60 makes it a two-shot kill against one and two armoured operators. In effect, it kills two and three speed operators as fast as a Keratos revolver. Against three armoured operators though, the pistol takes an additional shot to kill, pushing the time to kill to 267 milliseconds, which is why I could not take the Keratos revolver's place. Another sidearm you can make good use of is the ITA-12S, the pump-action shotgun available to both Spanish operators. It is useless in a firefight and will get you killed if you try to use it as a weapon. However, it is fantastic at punching holes in destructible surfaces, which Jackal and Mira tend to do quite often. The Italian operator's bailiff can also play a similar role, though it is far less effective than the Spanish shotgun at doing so. Without further ado, let's get to number one, the best sidearm in Rainbow Six Siege, the SMG-12. Available to both Korean operators, this is the SMG-11 with a few twists. For one, it is integrally suppressed, meaning it cannot equip any other muzzle attachment. This also means it performs identically to a suppressed SMG-11 in terms of stealth and time to kill. If you want a silent automatic sidearm, the SMG-12 bests all other machine pistols once you slap a suppressor on them, outperforming them on everything from time to kill to range to magazine capacity. Speaking of which, another difference that sets it apart from the SMG-11 is the magazine capacity. At 32 rounds, the SMG-12 has twice the capacity of the SMG-11. In other words, the SMG-12 alleviates the most significant drawback of the SMG-11, its cripplingly short capacity of 16 rounds. In doing so, it exposes another flaw, its recoil. The SMG-12 kicks like a mule, and even with a vertical grip, it is borderline uncontrollable. At this point, your best bet is to spray and pray, which I have found to work quite reliably. Another benefit that doubling of magazine capacity has brought to the SMG-12 is the doubling of reserve ammunition. At 166 rounds in reserve, the SMG-12 has twice the reserve ammunition as any other machine pistol. This proves very useful if you rely on your sidearm as your main gun, if, for example, you take a shotgun as your primary weapon. That concludes our list of the best sidearms in the game. Our next Rainbow Six Siege video will cover the worst defender weapons, followed by the worst attacker weapons. Please hit the like, subscribe and bell buttons to get notified as soon as they're out.